Hi, I'm Brian Heidelberger, a partner with the law firm of Winston & Strawn in Chicago. Here today with your advertising age mini law lesson. Today's law lesson, the FTC's new dot-com disclosure guidance, hot off the presses from yesterday, helping us make more effective disclosures in digital advertising. So, what did the FTC tell us? Well, the law really hasn't changed. The FTC has said if your claim is false, a disclaimer or disclosure isn't going to help you. You can only use disclaimers and disclosures to qualify an otherwise true claim in a manner that makes it more easily understood. Now, the FTC, of course, has said if there is information which is material to to your claim, it needs to be clearly and conspicuously disclosed. Now, most times this should be in close conjunction to the claim, but the FTC has said that in the digital online world, it may be that in certain instances, you can relegate those disclosures to uh, another page via a hyperlink, and they've told us how to do that. Now, of course, the FTC has said, use that only in select circumstances. If you can make the disclosure easily with the claim, then you should. You only relegate things to the disclosure when it's impossible to make those disclosures otherwise. So, if we are using a hyperlink, what information has the FTC given us? Well, they've told us to make sure that the link is obvious and consistent in style to all the other links that you use on your page and that other people use on their pages so people understand that it's a link. They also want you to use language that convey, conveys the information that will be con, uh, in that link. So it's not enough to say legal or disclaimer or terms. If it's important pricing information, then use that as the name of your link. If it is lease offer terms, then use that information as the name of your link. It's important to do that, and it's also important to keep the link close to the information it qualifies. So if your information is about a price, you want the link right next to or part of the price itself, not farther away in a spot that people might see it. And you need to definitely take into account not just how people will view your page on the internet, but also via mobile sites as well. Now, when you people click through to see what those disclosures are, they need to be taken right there in a manner that people see and easily understand them. It can't be hard to find. It can't be buried at the bottom of a page. It can't have a lot of contrasting information. And the FTC also wants you to monitor the click-through rates on your disclosures. If people aren't clicking on them, then the information likely is not being disclosed, and the FTC would want you to modify how you are using those kind of disclosures. Now, when making those disclosures, we know that the FTC wants them to be clearly and conspicuously disclosed. What does that mean to the FTC? Well, the FTC doesn't like you making people scroll down to the bottom of a page. The FTC doesn't think that the disclosure is probably read at that point. If you are going to make people scroll down, you definitely need to use text or visual cues so that they understand the need to scroll down. Now, they want you to make disclosures at times um, with the claim itself and then also in a product shopping cart. Don't relegate important material limitations to your product sale to a shopping cart. It probably should be in a product description as well. Now, they want you to repeat disclosures that are important in various spots on your website to make sure that people see it. And this is especially true with long websites. They want your limitations to be easily read and understood. And that's hard for lawyers, but we got to try to make them written in a way that people can read them very quickly and understand them. At the end of the day, what the FTC has told us, listen, we understand that it might be hard to make your claim and to give all the qualifications, but if you can't do it in a way that people don't understand it, then you shouldn't be making the claim at all. Now, the FTC has given us a bunch of examples that I think are helpful. Let's take a quick look at them. In this one, they disclose a price for this camera, but that price requires a contract for service. You see how the contract for service is on the same page, but it's separated and probably in a spot that the user's eyes might not read it. Because of that, the FTC believes that this contract requirement is not properly disclosed. Now, they also give us an example in the mobile context. You see that same disclosure of the contract is on the left-hand side. 
but when you um, flick to make that um, disclosure more easily readable on the price, you notice that the whole thing about the service contract gets completely cut out, and all you see is the price with no information of the service contract, and the FTC doesn't like that because they want us to consider mobile use as well. Now this is how the FTC likes it. You see the price and then you see a clear and prominent disclaimer in close conjunction to the price that doesn't say legal or information or disclaimer. It says that there are pricing uh, 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 service plans required and ask people to click through to get more information on those plans. Now you see another one here that the FTC likes. Satisfaction is guaranteed, but it's really not guaranteed because there is a restocking fee, which is a material limitation that the FTC, as you can see here, thinks is easily uh, disclosed in close conjunction to the satisfaction is guaranteed. So it shouldn't be relegated to a, a click-through. What can be re relegated to the click-through is more information about the restocking fee. But you see that the way it's done here is they say restocking fee applies, not just more information or something of that nature. Now in this example, the FTC shows a hyperlink for a three-quarter cut diamond, but in truth, not all diamonds are three-quarter carat. Um, some are smaller, some are larger. Now the link itself, the FTC has said, is not sufficient disclosure that the diamonds aren't necessarily three-quarter carats. Instead, what they needed here was probably some information that said carat weight varies, click here for more details, um, or carat weight var varies, which is clearly a hyperlink, which takes you that to more information. But this hyperlink on three-quarter carat is not enough, says the FTC. Now here we've got a blogger who gives a testimonial, and you see at the end, next to her signature, she says FS. That's supposed to stand for free sample. What the FTC is telling us is that most people don't understand an abbreviation like that. And because of that, the FTC is requiring more disclosure. In this example, you see that there is legal disclosure being given in somewhat of a clear and prominent way. It says, more disclosed on the jewelry via a link. The problem is there's a lot of white space in between the product description and the legal. Most people aren't going to make it all the way to that legal. That legal needs to be moved up in close conjunction to the claim in which it modifies. Now in this one, the FTC, as we learned earlier, they want price limitations as to a service contract, not just in this next page that we see here on the checkout page, but also in the prior page, which is the product description page, and we talked about that previously. Now here, the FTC says that you need a clear short link. Now, in a testimonial situation, you may have a consumer that had 30 pounds of weight lost. The FTC says, if that's not typical of your normal consumer, you need to disclose what is typical. And you see here in the good example, they disclosed one pound per week is the typical loss. What the FTC doesn't like is what's in the disclosure below, where it doesn't say the typical loss. It does that through a click-through, and it uses a click-through that's just a bit.ly link. People don't understand what information is going to be contained on that click-through. Now, interestingly, the FTC has told us they don't like multiple disclosures in Twitter on multiple tweets because, as you see here, she makes a tweet, and then if you're going to do a follow-up with material disclosures, the problem is there might be a lot of tweets in your stream in between that. Because of that, a consumer ver may very well miss the follow-up qualifying information. So on Twitter, the FTC wants your qualifying information to be in the tweet itself or via a hyperlink. Now, the FTC has also told us that they don't like hashtag SPON when you're trying to disclose that a post is sponsored. They don't think people understand what hashtag SPON means. They also don't like hashtags after the bit.ly link because in that type of instance, they see people stop reading when they see the bit.ly link and they won't even notice that the disclosure of sponsorship is there. Now the last example we've got today is the FTC relating to a blogger and disclosing again that they receive some free product, which they do do here, but it's at the very bottom of the post. And the problem is that it's after a bunch of links at the bottom of the post. The FTC believes at that point people have stopped reading and it's not a material, uh, it's not properly disclosed. So that's just uh, some good guidance uh, from the FTC. It was a 56-page document, but I did the reading for you so you didn't have to. I hope it was helpful. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, let's be careful out there.